for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please stand as I ask for a moment of silence tonight for a retired detective, police detective, Jack Vogel, and Marv Cohen, 70-year member from the Mahagan Hose Company. May they rest in peace. Thank you. Bro. Brent Cassoon. Here. Tobin. Here. Kleiner. Here. Johnson. Here. John Francois. Here. Burr. Here. Green. Sapson. Massey. Here. President Rodriguez. Here. And we have a quorum. Approval minutes. Tonight we have two minutes uh, tonight to approve one from the September 15th, 2020 council meeting and the November 19th council meeting. Motion by Alderman Massey, second by Alderman John Francois. For both meetings, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, correspondence. Yeah, tonight we have two correspondence from a Deborah, Deborah Alvio on 18 Wickham Avenue. For uh, she'd like to thank the Middletown Police Department for the great job that they did through Lieutenant Khalil and Officer Harlan. Received and filed. And then we also received a uh, from the Middletown Fire Department that the triannual fire department elections were held on December 8th. The membership elected the following slate of officers. Nick Barber, Fire Chief. Robert Brady, First Ass Assistant Chief. Randy McLean, Second Assistant Chief. Nick Elia, Third Assistant Chief. Sean Jaro, Department Secretary. And William Kelder, Department Treasurer. Received and filed. That's all for correspondence. Okay, for the good of the city, anyone would like to address the council, mm -hmm. please step forward. Eileen, do we have anybody online? We do not. Okay, remarks to the mayor. Uh, good evening. Um, <coughs> in addition, I'm, um, you know, uh, Mr. Volo, a longtime member of the Middletown Police Department, but Mr. Cohen was also uh, very active in and other city events and affairs. And he was city historian for quite a few years, wrote a few books on Middletown and, and was a noted author on the um, on railroads. So uh, his, uh, his knowledge will certainly be missed and, and we thank um, both the Volo family and the, Co and the Cohen family for the years of sharing their, their folks with us here in the city. Um, oh, here it is. The uh, news on the COVID is getting better for us, but worse as a, as a country, but we're still in the yellow zone. Uh, Middletown has dropped, you know, we, we did implement the mask mandate um, well over a month ago, and uh, our caseload has gone down to 129, our active caseload. Uh, we are now number six on active cases. Um, it's, um, I've expressed my concern to, uh, to the state that uh, the, the fact that we are six on the list and, um, and there are communities ahead of us with more active cases that are not in the yellow zone. Not that I want them to be in yellow, but I want us to get out of yellow. And um, to, to date, I haven't had um, um, a response on that, but we are pushing for it. Um, because Middletown people are complying. Uh, the police department is doing numerous checks daily. I get a report first thing every day. Uh, the, um, there have been a couple of violations. I understand there was a task force violation over the weekend with a, with a business, and I think the Middletown police issued um, one violation today for a, uh, it might have been yesterday or today, for the violation of the mask mandate of a business that had been previously warned. But overall, people here are doing what we asked him to do. And um, there is a, uh, a tremendous burden on, on some of our businesses. They've asked me to convey that to Albany, and I have, and I do so on a daily basis. So um, uh, I just want to say thank you to those in our community that are helped drive that number down from uh, just uh, four or five days ago, it was 179 cases in Middletown, and today it's 129 active cases. So let's just keep doing the job. The 
fact that um, with the mask mandate, um, we have to maintain our status as being in a, um, a state of emergency. So Alex Smith has drawn up the extension of the state of emergency. I believe we can only do it 30 days at a time. From what John and I have been told by Mr. Smith. So we were, uh, we'll probably do it again in January, but for now the state of emergency is extended to January 18th. The mask mandate remains in place that if you're walking down the street by yourself or, or you come across people, you have to be, stay within six feet or stay at least six feet apart if you don't have a mask on. So social distancing, wearing of masks, inside businesses. We are giving, we have been giving some warnings, but if you're given a second warning as the business was today, you will be given a violation to appear in city court. We've spent the last couple of days preparing for uh, tomorrow night and Thursday. <coughs> and we cannot emphasize enough that um, the projected storm, a storm is projected to drop at least 18 inches of snow. Orange and Rockland has brought in extra crews. We do anticipate a loss of power in the area. I don't know where, of course, but the, um, um, our crews are lighter as, than usual because we do have cases of COVID in the city, um, some with our employees. So we're gonna ask for patience. We're gonna ask for cooperation. We're gonna ask people to make sure their cars are off the street. Don't wait until uh, midnight. Um, the snow is supposed to start tomorrow evening. Um, the sooner you get the cars off the street and keep them off the street, uh, the better we'll be able to address uh, the huge snowfall. Downtown, the two lots, the James Street lot, will be totally closed for overnight parking. Um, and the lot behind here, the two new lots, because of the ability for us, we're going to have to remove snow because of the plantings have not taken root yet. So we're not gonna be able to dump the snow into the areas designed to receive some of the snow. I know the, uh, the uh, landscaper was meeting today with Mark Pengel, our assistant commissioner. And I know Jacob was consulted also. And uh, we're just asking for people's cooperation. I know that we did issue a few permits for James Street lot. They will have to relocate to another lot in the downtown area that will allow for overnight parking. We're also asking that if possible, do not shovel your sidewalk or your snow back into the street. I know we ask it every year <laughs> and people put it in the street and don't do it too early. Your, your driveway will get plowed in. I know it's gonna be a deep snow, so you might wanna get ahead of it. So uh, maybe that doesn't work for, for everybody, but the plows will have to push the snow back further in order to keep the roads open and widen because of the projected heavy snowfall. So we're gonna be coming closer to the curb. Some of it will go up on your sidewalk. And then when all of this is done, you have 24 hours to clear your sidewalks and make them passable. What we're trying to avoid with the parking lots and on the streets is this. This helps no one. It doesn't help your neighborhood. It doesn't help you when you have to go out and shovel that after a day where it's um, that snow piled around your car becomes ice. So we need to avoid this situation and ask for all the cooperation for people. Um, the city crews will be out on a steady flow for quite a while. And um, as I said, we're a little bit short on staff because of COVID and it's important for everyone to do our best to um, help the Commissioner of Public Works and the DPW Department and Mark Pengel uh, to keep the city streets clean. You read about this past Sunday um, in our uh, in the Times Hill record about making merry where Middletown people are moving forward and stepping forward on uh, some of the programs that we're doing our recreation program. They have been all along, uh, but we um, uh, we're getting inquiries about people that would like to donate, and you can do so by contacting my office, and we will um, connect you with the recreation department, or you can call the recreation department directly. Um, we've had some significant gifts where I think um, uh, just on the, on the, um, the Santa program alone, um, we're into the thousands and we're trying to address every need for every kid. And we are also doing, um, uh, we're going to increase the 
soup kitchen allotment again through uh, federal COVID funds and CDBG funds. We had previously given $10,000 to the soup kitchen. Their demand is increased uh, so much. Um, we're probably going to do at least another 10,000, I believe, Maria, am I correct? Yeah. And then um, uh, the recreation program is doing about 300 families and seniors a month on a regular basis. They've been doing so since the beginning of COVID. Uh, people are getting food baskets, they're getting um, necessities such as uh, toilet paper, soaps, and sanitizing creams along with food on a monthly basis. And so uh, Chris is here, Chris Brinkerhoff, uh, she's the head of the recreation department. And it's done in conjunction with the senior program where our senior program is making phone calls to their list of seniors in need. And I know Nicole um, is uh, doing the coordination of the program within Parks and Recreation. So thank you to all of them. Um, thank you to all who are contributed to helping Santa come to visit a lot of the kids here who are writing letters. And um, the again, the request, the number of requests um, is, is quite significant. And we're, um, uh, we're hoping, and I believe we will be able to address everyone's, um, everyone's need this year on some level. Um, last Thursday, we had the uh, third annual Festival of Lights, menorah lighting. It was virtual. Last I checked, which was a few days ago, we had over 8,000 views on, um, on YouTube or on Facebook. Um, it was a, um, a small group of people did attend. I know um, all the women, Ram Kassoon and all women Green did attend along with Chief, uh, Chief Iwanchu, Maria Bruni and her department, Joe Ferrara. We wanted to keep it small, and um, because of the because of COVID, so um, I want, want to sh uh, wish the um, all who celebrate uh, Hanukkah uh, happy happy Hanukkah. I'm having trouble saying that uh, tonight for some reason, but um, it was um, very well received. Rabbi Rubenstein uh, did some music and and uh, uh, for the for the holiday and and uh, had a very good response. And next year we'll be out of COVID and we'll be able to make it a much larger celebration as it has been in the past. You also know we did cancel the Christmas tree lighting, but we had the virtual lighting of, uh, of about a half a dozen trees in the downtown area. So we're, we're trying to continue with and keep people active, um, something to look forward to. The fire department did a drive through through the city with the fire trucks and Santa on the back that was very well received. And we're trying to keep the kids excited and give them something to do. We also have an update on the warming station. The good news is, is that yesterday um, HUD approved the amendment that the Common Council passed last, last week, our last meeting, and they did accept the, um, the amendment for use of COVID funds at the Mulberry House. The plans and specs are ready and will be able for review on Monday, and we hope to send it out to bid early next week. <clears throat> we are going to be able to stage the work in that we're looking to do. The biggest job right now, um, which was somewhat unexpected, was the HVA system in the new part of the building is not in good shape. So we anticipate that will have to be replaced, um, and we'll update it with the filtration systems. Um, but the bathrooms have to be um, updated also. But for the most part, um, we might be towards the middle of January. I'm hoping we can get the bids out next week. Allow two weeks for the bids. They're not big jobs. It's a floor in the HVA system. Depends on when they can get equipment in, and we'll be able to uh, to make that shift over. But we'll we're going to do our best to get it out as, as soon as possible. <clears throat> on the finance front, you know, we did pass our budget. We did meet, I believe, nine years in a row now with the. Um, the uh, tax cap, but we just got the bad news from New York State <clears throat> is that due to um, the federal government's inability to come to a solution about state and local aid, which they are still debating, um, the state of New York has followed through with their 20% cut in AIM funding, which is the aid to municipalities. We receive about $2.7 million a year and state unrestricted state aid. Um, that line has been 
reduce the payment <clears throat> that comes in December. We get about 200,000 um, in the first quarter and the balance comes in December. Um, we got the letter first saying you're not gonna get the full amount and uh, sure enough, they're not gonna send the full amount. So the, um, our 2020 budget will be short about $500,000 in projected aid. Compound that with 2021, in which we did budget the full AIM funding, anticipating A, that the federal government would come through with state and local aid, and B, that um, even if they don't um, in 2020, that 2021, hopefully with a new president who supports state and local government aid, will be supportive of that, and Congress will be able to get off their butts and do something about um, maintaining some type of formula that will protect police, firemen, nurses, doctors, hospitals, rural hospitals. Without state and local aid, you're gonna see uh, a lot more people getting laid off nationally. From this, the stats that I was given today, 1.3 million municipal workers have been laid off across the United States as of now. And that's primarily because the federal government has not stepped up with state and uh, local local aid. Some people, I've been discussing this on social media, some people jump back at you and say, pay for your own. You've heard the president say that. Um, it's blue states and you're mismanaging your budgets and that's why we're not giving that money out to you. Well, A, it's not only blue states, it's all states. <clears throat> and B, um, the reason why states and local government cannot just do what the federal government does is we can't print money. We can't run deficits. So the federal government is the only governmental agency in the country that can run a deficit. Therefore, they're allowed to, um, as you know, print trillions of dollars of money and, and hand it out. Um, you know, that's a big macro microeconomics <laughs> argument on, a, on the national level. I don't know uh, where it goes, but I do know is that there was a trillion dollar tax cut that was given about two or three years ago. And the state and local aid portion of this bill that's coming up is only $160 billion nationally. I don't know if that solves the problem for state and local government, but it does go a long way to addressing some of the issues that um, we all have. So we're asking um, the uh, people here in Middletown and whoever's watching that you can um, assist us. Although all three people on the screen, Senator Schumer, Senator Gillibrand, and Congressman Maloney, all support, very strongly support state and local aid. It doesn't hurt to drop an email or make a phone call. Um, I can assure you that uh, 2021, that I have no plans to do any layoff. We do have a, um, some vacancies that we are delaying till June. Is there a possibility that those vacancies may not be filled? Yes, depending upon the status of the, um, the budget um, with, with New York State. But um, we, we had a pretty strong fund balance, as you know, due to our hard work here over the past 10 years, and uh, we'll be able to weather a storm. Communities like Poughkeepsie will not be able to weather the storm. Newburgh is also having tough, in tough conditions also. So will it change our long-term um, outlook on how we staff? And um, will it make a big dent into our fund balance? Yes. So there may be some long-term changes by not filling vacancies. But I, absent of state and local aid, um, I do see that. I do see us not filling vacancies. I don't see us, I don't wanna scare our staff and our employees that we're gonna do some massive layoffs if state and local aid doesn't come. Some communities will. I don't believe we're there. I don't believe we'll be there in 2021 either, but we still need to get this thing passed. And um, there has been some progress this evening. From what we understand, there is a um, talk about separating um, businesses and, and uh, you know the, the stimulus aid or the financial aid that's going out for hospitals and for testing and COVID, um, they are talking about passing that portion of the bill, um, which will be about $700 billion, and separating the state and local aid, 
which the Democrats want, and also separating the liability insurance, um, giving businesses some liability protection against COVID lawsuits, which the Republicans want in Congress. So um, if it appears they may do that and, and delay the state and local aid argument. I hope it's because on January 20th, we're going to have a new president and it'll be much easier to get that passed. And so we might be on a little bit of a, uh, on that part. I do agree with doing it, to be honest with you, that I think it's important that we get money out to people who need it, extend the unemployment benefits and extend the other benefits in the, um, in the package that is there for people who need it, soup kitchens, uh, food pantries, and everything. If you've seen Texas, miles and miles of cars lined up just to get food. So I, I see it happening, and I know that on the, um, on the national level, some of the Republican politicians are speaking up now, and, and they are um, supporting some type of federal aid. And who's this guy? This guy is the guy behind me. He's Fire Chief Don Lewis. Don has gone through the ranks with all of us here. Um, the past three years, he's served as chief. He's done an outstanding job. Uh, he's not only accessible, but he's made good decisions. He's managed his budget well. Um, and, um, you know, we've had, a, we've had a pretty good time, pretty good run with Don. So I wanted to say thank you to Don and Peggy for uh, all the nights out. With um, Don's been out of the house answering calls. But uh, he should be very proud. He did a good job. And I wanted to just say thank you and give you a round of applause tonight. For that. And last <clears throat> is Happy Holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, however you celebrate uh, to the residents of the city. Get ready for the snow, and I'll take any questions if you have them. Any questions for the mayor? Alderman Kleiner. Um, thank you. Uh, mayor, t just quickly, would you, this may seem irrelevant with uh, 18 inches of snow coming, but would you just explain about the uh, skate park and, and that it's, closed because sure. of the construction and because of the uh, contractors insisting on it? Yeah, well, the, the word not only the contractors, but our insurance company is, Insur is kind of concerned about, um, as you can see, there's still construction going on in the vicinity of the skate park. Uh, we were hoping this project would be done, you know, months ago. Unfortunately, we ran into some problems with drainage in James Street lot. The project got delayed, so the project's not done. The worst, the, the skate park is the responsibility of the city. That's not part of the contract. So we're responsible. The liability of the skate park is on us. So if someone goes flying off into that construction site and we allowed it, um, we would have some liability there. We're also doing some sidewalk work, the ADA access on the corner. It's close to the skate park. So we decided to keep it closed. Um, many people are violating it. The police have been enforcing it. But uh, <coughs> you are right that after tomorrow, it won't be an issue for quite a while because there'll be quite a bit of snow on it. So, uh, but uh, one of the questions, and I think it might have been you, Jerry, is why isn't the rest of the project fenced in for protection? Um, well, they're not skating on the dirt, number one. And number two is the, uh, that responsibility lies with the contractor how to secure, secure the site. So the, um, our site is the skate park. Their site is the construction site. So uh, we, we kept it closed out of caution. I know it's closed longer than I thought it would be, but it is what it is. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And Mark's the department head, economic development. I just want to wish everybody a happy holiday, Merry Christmas, and if do you have any questions for me? Any questions for Maria? Thank you, Maria. Thank you. DPW Commissioner. Good evening, all. Excuse me. Yeah. So um, I'll start off with the reservoir 
uh, levels, um, Alderman Massey, 96% fall, which is very good news for us. And this uh, coming uh, snow event obviously will top them off, and uh, we're very happy about that. Um, the mayor has spoke, uh, it did speak for a long time about, not for a long time, explained exactly what we're doing with the snow. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I mean, he did an excellent job covering it. So I'm not going to be repetitive. So please just bear with us and, and, um, and stay off the road, please. Remember, two and a half inches or more, you have to be off the road. You cannot park on city streets, two and a half inches or more. It doesn't matter what time it is. Also, just to add to what the mayor said, is try to shovel uh, around the fire hydrant in your neighborhood. Try to do that for us so that, uh, God forbid, if the fire department comes out for some emergency, uh, the fire uh, hydrant will be readily accessible for them. And please help our guys out. Don't curse them out. I mean, we're, we're going to come back and keep uh, plowing and plowing and plowing until the streets are safe for everyone. So we may have to, unfortunately, cover your driveway again. So just be patient with us. Try to push back shoveling the snow out as much as you can. But I understand that you have to go there regular on a regular basis so that it doesn't pile up for you and it becomes a very tough task for you to shovel the snow and clear your sidewalk. Um, regarding the COVID, also the mayor, he addressed it very well. Uh, I, I need to give some compliments to all of DPW staff and the administrative uh, uh, staff in our offices in here. We had cases of COVID. Um, we have implemented very strict, under the mayor's direction, very strict um, policy of wearing a mask all the time in the office, keeping fresh air coming into the offices, and keeping physical separation. So we had three cases of COVID, two, build, two inspectors and one of the administrative staff. And in spite of us living and I mean, working together, close to each other sometimes, communicating with each other, none of that COVID virus has uh, spread to the remaining uh, staff. And that is really, it goes to show how responsible our people are um, our administrative staff, uh, we have, uh, you know, elder uh, code enforcement officers that it was very critical to keep everybody safe in there, and they were very successful in keeping uh, uh, and limiting the spread of the virus. The same goes to our sanitation department. We had some issues in there in sanitation department. Thank God, because they were taking very, uh, listening to the guidelines in there and the policy, even the three person on the, on the garbage truck, sometimes, sometimes they, they ride together, they had their masks on, and only one person who was infected did not spread the virus over to the others. So it's, it's very simple. If we wash, sanitize, wear the mask, keep our, financial, keep our social distance from each other, we'll be safe. And um, I just wanted to put the word out and thank our people for being very responsible and uh, keeping themselves and their families safe and keeping DPW and the city functioning as far as public service for roads, water, sewer lines, and, and, uh, and so on. We haven't stopped doing uh, any of our duties uh, so far. Um, as far as the um, public, uh, as far as the capital projects, I'm going to just zip through them because there's so many of them. The water lines at the water treatment plant, the, the construction is progressing very well. Uh, we are all, all the way up to almost up to Route 211 from the water treatment plant. So we worked our way and we are, we're done with the park, with the 12 inch water main. They are putting the new line in there yet. Uh, it's done. We haven't done the final connection yet. It will be done at a uh, later date. Uh, so we will we'll slow down. The contractor is going to slow down until the beginning of January, weather permitting. But they want to come back in January and continue to work on it. Um, uh, also, uh, Brian Smith, our deputy commissioner, uh, he came to us. He's been with us for a few months now. And he's very active and very ambitious in going and really upgrading our infrastructure in terms of looking out for uh, broken valves, valves are not uh, operational, uh, sewer lines that are, are, you know, they need some attention, cleaning them and all that stuff. So him and Scott Mills and the rest of our water and sewer department, they've really been doing a great job. It's nonstop. If it's not water main break, they jump and they replace 
um, operating nut on a valve that's buried underground. So if we ever need to shut it down, it will be available for us. Broken valve that they find during troubleshooting the system, they dig it up the next day and they just replace it. So they're very ambitious and, and they're very active and they're not just sitting there as they have been, but now with Brian leadership of the department uh, as a deputy commissioner, uh, he's really making uh, making uh, some uh, some uh, real uh, changes in there and upgrading our system. And for that, I'm thankful and I appreciate that. Also, beers drive in there. I heard from the aldermen of the of the fourth ward, both of them about uh, and the mayor and the council president about the because they were copied on the emails um, about some odor or sewer smell in um, in beers drive area. We have been for the past two weeks digging up the entire area before we heard about the smell or the odor, sewer odor, to replace and troubleshoot and fix any blockages in the line and clean the lines, flush them completely. So everything is flushed, everything is complete, everything is clean within the sewer lines in there. So we, don't under, we do not understand where the odor is coming from, but we're going to continue to investigate. Uh, Alderman um, Tobin, he sent me a picture of a manhole that has been... Uh, dislocated a little bit open so we saw it today unfortunately we had a water main break we had to go to attend to but tomorrow we're going to go address that manhole in there we spoke to the people in the neighborhood i called them back too we assured them that there is no really an issue in there that we're aware of but we're going to continue to troubleshoot and look for the source of order we're not saying it's it's not there it's just when we're there it's not there the order so we're going to continue to look until until uh, people are happy and satisfied that uh, they're their issues are being addressed. Uh, ADA got curbs and sidewalks in here. All the uh, city curbs and sidewalks have been done and um, in, in the downtown area. And the contractor is shutting down now for the uh, winter. And then we're going to start um, again in the spring, early spring, I hope, with the Dolson Avenue and the other uh, curbs and sidewalks in there. <coughs> Wastewater... Um, uh, treatment plant screw pumps, they got delivered, two of them were, got delivered. Contractor was installing them today. He's going to continue to install them tomorrow. We expect hopefully <coughs> to have a startup of those two pumps. Uh, they are major pieces of equipment, the screw pumps. Someday I'll show you pictures of them. And um, hopefully next week or the following week we'll have them started up, the first two pumps, and then we have three more pumps coming in. Um, to replace the old ones that have been running for over 30 years and they're just their time is, is done. Um, water treatment plant, pump station, uh, uh, construction is progressing in there too. Uh, however, it's, it's a little bit slow because we're waiting for the pumps, their special orders to arrive and uh, we, can, uh, we can install them then. Water storage tanks, design. We are meeting virtually with the, with the engineers, designers in there to trying to resolve some issues with the site and um, for water storage tanks, Mountain Avenue tank replacement, uh, Mountain Avenue tank, uh, High Barney tank, and repainting of um, Highland Avenue tank. So we're working on that. We're pushing to start to issue the uh, final plans and specifications for contracts for bidding, hopefully in January. Um, New York Rising <coughs> a project, we're finalizing the, the design has been finalized, we're, um, we're waiting for um, approval to go out for bid from the state, which we are expecting to get it this week or next week. So that is a project for rebuilding, for uh, replacing the bridge on West Main Street at the entrance of the <coughs> city by Maplehurst Park and replacing the culvert uh, under Grant Avenue. And that's the one you guys have been uh, talking to us about. So that will be done also. And um, uh, traffic operations, the mayor and I met with the engineers for the traffic operations. That's $21 million project in there. We wanted to make sure that all the gaps are being filled between the traffic operations projects, which, which is $21 million, ADA <coughs> sidewalks, which is about four. Four four and a half million dollars, and the, the streetscape, which is about two point two million dollars. So we want to make sure that there are no voids or gaps between all these three major projects that we're doing right now. And that's what the mayor and I met with the engineers, and um, and we try to plug all these holes in there. And they are at the final stage. So we expect to go out for bid in January for this twenty one million dollar project too, as well. Uh, Department of Health. They did an annual inspection. 
um, uh, last month, and DEC, they did their annual inspection of our dams uh, this month. So I think we're going to be fine. Uh, the chief uh, of the fire department, Don Lewis, I worked for, very closely with him for, for, for three years. I think it was very, very uh, a constructive relationship that we had together. And, and like I just like I did with any with the previous chiefs, but uh, you know, I, I wish him well. And I'm sure uh, he will enjoy not being called all the time, but I'm sure he's going to continue to show up. Like Sam Barone, he never stopped, and he's going to continue to show up. And I look forward to working uh, with the new fire chief. Any questions for me? Well, Massey. <clears throat> Jacob, uh, with the impending massive snow that we're going to get, Thursday normally is garbage pickup for the first ward. Is there anything you want us to do or not to do that different yeah just i would ask that you delay putting out the garbage still we're going to try we're going to pick it up thursday morning but delay putting it out on the curb because it doesn't you know as much as you can okay otherwise you know it, it is what it is we're going to we're going to have to deal with it thank you yeah anyone else thank you jacob thank you. fire chief uh oh he wrote a book well, Jacob had it. Looked like he needed water up here, but uh, <laughs> um, anyway. Um, oh my God. <laughs> that's not too bad. I write big. Um, the 11th and the 12th of this month, we, we had our, uh, our drive by uh, Santa Run, um, another event that we thought would probably be canceled due to COVID, along with everything else that we uh, tried to do this year. but. Uh, the drive-by went well. Um, it, you know, the uh, public rode in. A lot of people uh, wanted to know why we it didn't go down their streets. Um, we do apologize. Uh, we just can't hit every sh every street that there is in the city. But those that were able t to see it, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, as uh, uh, President Council Council President said, uh, Marv Cohen. A 70 year plus member of the Manhagans passed away. Um, prayers and thoughts to his, his family and um, his knowledge will be greatly missed uh, in the city of Middletown. And um, uh, we haven't completely made a decision, but um, as most storms, we do do a storm detail. So uh, the members don't have to worry about driving to the scenes, they'll already be. Um, at the firehouses in small quantities and along with their um their own fire truck in their own meeting rooms um so they'll be uh practicing all the social distancing and then all the covid uh, uh guidelines um along with the masks um a couple thank yous um as my years as chief of the middletown fire department are nearing the end i have a lot to be grateful for and a lot and to be able to do the job I enjoy. I want to thank God for guiding me through all that was thrown my way this uh, year, as everyone has, has had uh, many ups and downs. Also want to thank my family, my girlfriend, um, now my fiance. Um, we got engaged on uh, Tuesday, December 8th. Um, Thank you uh, for being by my side to. Did she say yes? Um, She's an angel. She did. <laughs> I did look at her and she said, well, what's the question? So. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, th th through good and bad, and uh, she uh, gave me a lot of guidance. Um, I also want to thank the uh, mayor for his guidance. Um, the many meetings that we had and uh, telling me uh, when I got into office, you need to change. Um, my attitude, my demeanor, uh, we had a lot of pep talks and I must say change was good. I want to thank all of the council members for your support, for making funds available so the department could protect the Middletown citizens and the community with the most up-to-date equipment. Also want to thank Jacob, the DPW office, police chief, 
police department, Parks and Rec, Maria, and I'm sure there's a bunch of other people that I may have missed. But and to the chiefs that are in line with me, the volunteers, the career staff of the Middletown Fire Department, a big thank you for your support and believing in me as a leader for, for the department. I did my best, what I believed in, to help protect the citizens of the community. For those that took bents against me in the beginning of my career, I'm glad I can say I believe I have proven you wrong. And as um, John Nunchuk mentioned earlier, we, ha we had our um, department elections December 8th. Um, Nikki Barber, Chief Robert Brady, first and second, First assistant, Randy McLean, second assistant, Nick Ely, a third assistant, Sean secretary, Bill Kelder, treasurer, and I wish them success. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Any questions for the fire chief? Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Okay, police chief. Good evening. Just a few things this evening. Um, some of them have already been touched upon, so I just want to add a little bit to them. Uh, the overnight parking, uh, obviously with the storm coming, it's very important, but I just want to remind the residents that it did go into full effect on December 1st of this year. We did do warnings for about a week, week and a half, and now we are issuing summons. Um, so I just want to remind everyone to please obey the overnight parking. In regards to the winter parking permits, um, there's only been a handful of them issued thus far, but I just want to remind the people that do have them that they are uh, suspended, those privileges are suspended during winter weather events. So that doesn't give you the right to, to park on the street during the winter weather. Um, earlier, we did send out a Nixle notice on uh, reminding people of the parking regulations and the on, uh, upcoming weather. Um, just as a reminder, Nixle is a great tool for our community. And to subscribe, if you haven't done so already, please text uh, Middletown, the word Middletown to 888-777, and it'll sign you up to receive any of the updated notices, um, whether it's um, criminal activity, a water main break, anything weather related or events. Um, the mayor touched upon the mask mandate. We are out doing our enforcement. Um, I just ask that people continue to do their part and help us stay safe and move us through this pandemic. Uh, we spoke several months ago in regards to the body-worn cameras. The uh, department does have them all now. They have been implemented in stages. We will be fully implemented on by January 4th is the, like the go live date all across the board. Um, so it's been a great program. It's been a great vendor to work with. Uh, my staff's done a great job uh, getting us up and ready for this. So um, as you see the officers in the community, they will start having their body cameras uh, on them. Um, they're small. They kind of blend into the uniforms when you don't really notice them. Um, I see them walking around the station now and it's kind of second nature. It's, they're just part of their, their daily equipment. So uh, we look forward to you know the successful use of them and we appreciate your support in helping us get this project up and running. Uh, during the month of October and into November, we partnered with the New York State Police on an enforcement detail. Uh, we ended up cutting it a little bit short due to the, the change in our COVID status here in Middletown. But, I just want to just touch upon that. I, I think I've mentioned it in previous uh, meetings, but I do have some stats. During that, that short time period, we did over 330 arrests. Um, we'll be doing a full press release here in the coming weeks to discuss the details of it, but they were arrests on like specific areas, hot spots that we, we focused on based on previous crime and criminal activity that was occurring um, leading up to our decision to bring them up aboard. Um, so I just want to thank them for their, their efforts with that and all my staff that worked with them as well. I'd also like to congratulate Chief Donald Lewis for his successful uh, career as a fire chief. It was a pleasure working with you. And lastly, just wish everybody a Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and a safe and healthy New Year. Any questions for the police chief? Thank you, Chief. Superintendent of Recreation. Good evening. Uh, my real main reason for being here tonight is to be on, thank our public, thank our employees, thank our businesses, thank our teachers, 
the care packages, the donations, the gift cards, the cash that has come in to help us do the care packages we've been doing since March, and also extra for Christmas has been absolutely amazing. I don't know if it's more overwhelming to see the need and what's coming in, what we're hearing from the schools and local non-for-profits, or if it's more amazing to see the response from our community. We live in an incredible, incredible place. Um, I have to get a sh shout out to all the elves that have been working over at the recreation department. Um, you know we have the Santa's uh, letters to the North Pole. There's five mailboxes out there. Uh, this Friday is the last chance for kids to drop letters off because Santa just gets way too busy to answer them after that. But kudos to the, the elves that have helped Santa answer hundreds of letters. And some of those letters I know will be getting special attention from uh, Santa Claus. And it took a city to help Santa Claus get that done. So that's a great, great thing. Um, we are not running our traditional programs because of COVID. But thing, we are so busy right now at the rec department, it's amazing. We do have our uh, employee academic assistant program running. As you know, kids aren't even hybrid anymore. They're all remote. So we have a, <clears throat> a full house that uh, we're able to keep safely in and apart. The kids have been great. The staff has been great. I know it's been an asset to the city employees. Uh, the rec department and the police department will also be doing a little parade to lift spirits. The fire department did an incredible one. Uh, we're going to look at hopefully next week um, the storm to change the plans of this week, <laughs> and hopefully we'll get to hit some of the streets the fire department couldn't and just bring some more smiles to people's faces. Um, the rec department did a holiday light display contest. Uh, I noticed just coming down Highland Avenue today the amazing lights, but families had to sign up to participate, and 35 homes did. Saturday we had some judges go around. Uh, there's winners in five categories. There's an overall winner. That's all going to be announced uh, December 23rd. It'll be done virtually with a video, with a video to add. Um, talking about videos, just one other quick thing we're doing. We have a story time series that Sharon Berthoff does, our Sharon DeLillo. And uh, we did a story time holiday series every Tuesday and Thursday. There's someone different from the city reading a story. Uh, in fact, tonight at 7 o'clock, it was uh, the police chief's premiere. Uh, he did a great job, and I believe this Thursday uh, the mayor's on. I think I have to watch the police chiefs. Um, <clears throat> he has two co-stars. Yes, he does have two co-stars, Lieutenant Graziano and Lieutenant Tholwin. Please watch it. Yes. So uh, in, in Christmas, he uses the big finale of Twas a Night Before Christmas, and it's pretty interactive. So uh, you can get on the YouTube pages. So you can see those that have already already read, some of our preschool teachers, actually one of our kids in the employee and training program. It, it, it's a cute little thing, and it's getting lots of views. Um, Officer Beebe and Officer Welch were over like 143 views. So it, it, another nice little thing just to raise the spirits in the city, which is, which is wonderful. Um, our care packages, the mayor touched on that. We continue to do those. Uh, we have 11 routes serving 20 families at a time. We have 40, 40 packages going out every week. Um, tomorrow is going to be all 40 at once. We usually break it up because we're anticipating the storm. So we have people hustling around and um, are, are very busy. But so, there are some of the wreck things. And the only thing I want to mention about the snow coming up uh, the reservoir is very much still being used by walkers. It doesn't matter what the weather is. Sometimes we even have to chase them out because the, the wind's too much and keep them safe. Um, Friday, if you go heading up there right away, most likely those lots might not be plowed yet that you're using for walking the reservoir. Uh, the DPW guys and the parks and recreation guys have to get city lots, city sidewalks, parks, everything clear first than those parking lots. We know people want to go up and cross-country ski and also snowshoe. We're advising those people, once we get the lot done, and we'll get it done as soon as we can, park in the Van Burenville lot for cross-country skiing and snowshoeing because those trails won't be plowed, so you can make your own trails through with the cross-country skis. For walkers, we advise you to park in the Highland Lake parking lots because that black trail will be plowed for walkers and it's also plowed for city workers to, to do their job with the dams and the reservoirs. So if anybody has any questions, please call the Recreation Department. We'll answer those questions. But we're anticipating that reservoir staying busy all year round 
So far, it's been incredible. And I, I have to get a little shout out. We have a part-time seasonal worker up there, uh, Luke Yeager. The job he's done up there has been incredible, blazing trails, um, making trails wider, making them safer, uh, reporting any, any dangerous trees. Uh, he just completed what's an orange trail, which will bring you into the Van Duzer parking lot, so it'll actually make a loop for some of you snowshoers and cross-country skiers. So call with any questions. We know, we know that is um, very important to a lot of people, and we get a lot of calls every day on that. And I want to thank you the last meeting of December. I want to thank you for all your support, as always. Um, new equipment in Amsher, new equipment in um, Academy. So the financial support and just the support of the struggling times we've had having to be creative this year, um, we, we always feel your support and the community support, and we definitely appreciate it. And, and that's all I have tonight. I wish the community a great holiday. Any questions for Chris? Thank you, Chris. City Clerk. I had nothing this evening, just to wish everybody a uh, happy holidays. Any questions for John? Thank you, John. All right. Remarks of Alderman, Alderman Massey. Thank you for your service and uh, good luck in your retirement. I hope you're staying hey, around and stay involved. Your hey, mic, turn your mic. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to say that again only because my mic was off. Chief Lewis, thank you uh, for your years of service. We ap certainly appreciate it and uh, we hope that you'll stay involved. To all the city employees, I want to thank you for a, obviously a very difficult year, but you got through it and thank you very much. Thank you to the department heads and my uh, fellow council people. Thank you. It was a pleasure working with you again. I uh, want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, whatever you celebrate. And hopefully next year will be a much better year than this one. And with the impending snowstorm, look, it's going to be a pain in the neck for two or three days, but we'll get over this if we work together. And on Saturday or Sunday, we'll probably look and say, boy, that was a, a real bad one. And we're back to semi-normal. So just bear with it, do what you can, and we'll get through this and happy holidays. Alderman Tobin. Uh, first, uh, I'd like to ask John to schedule a meet, uh, meeting of the Public Safety Committee on Tuesday uh, next week, the 22nd. Uh, those of you on the committee, can you do five o'clock or? Five o'clock is fine. Five, six? Okay. Uh, how, how many are meetings we've got, now? We've got five on the committee, so if he can't make it, that's fine. We can still. We still have a call. All right, so is, uh, Five o'clock works. What clock is fine with me? Wait, check with Kate. I'm like. I won't be able to do the twenty seventh. Twenty second. Twenty second. Next week. Next Tuesday. Oh yeah, I can do that. Okay. Five o'clock. No. Is five o'clock okay with you? Okay. So five o'clock. Five o'clock. Could yep. you notify? The I'll need an agenda too for that. And did you want that virtual? Uh yeah. yeah. You did? Okay. And uh, I'd like to thank the mayor, the, the, the uh, finance committee, and the uh, board of estimate for uh, you know avoiding the layoffs. I know this is a really tough time of year, uh, and a lot of other municipal employees are being laid off and furloughed right before the holidays. And so I commend you on your you know the budgeting and and keeping the city in a a well-grounded you know financial uh, footing, especially what we see in a lot of other cities in the in New York. They're facing uh, financial trouble, bankruptcy. So thank you guys, I appreciate it. Uh, I think everybody does. And uh, I would like, I really enjoy driving around the city this time of year, seeing all the decorations, uh, really brightens our spirits. Uh, I'd like to thank the Chief uh, Lewis uh, for his years of service and the fire department for the uh, Santa parade or, or run. Uh, my daughter came running in, Dad, Santa's outside, he's driving through the neighborhood. So he ran out to the porch and we waved to him and that was definitely a highlight of the day or the evening. So uh, that's it for me. Thank you. Alderman Johnson. Thank you. So I think I'll follow the trend of others. I think 2020, we're all going to say goodbye and good riddance. It wasn't really the best of times. It wasn't the worst of times. Um, I'm going to follow chief's lead, fire chief that is. I think 
we do have stuff to be thankful for. The year uh, for Middletown, I think, has been a paradox. As far as a municipality, we've made a lot of progress. We've moved forward in a lot of events and a lot of uh, projects that have enhanced the quality of life of our residents. But as a community, we have a lot of residents who've had major, and in some cases, catastrophic setbacks. But we do have stuff to be thankful for. I want to thank the mayor and the administration, all the department heads, and all the people who do all of the work. Um, we have made strides, and I think we've seen exemplary leadership and service, and I thank you all for that, and for you in particular, Chief, as you exit stage left. I think the mayor continues to have an ability to have his finger on the pulse of our city, figure out where we have to go, and figure out how we can get there, so I thank him for that. Hunger has been in the forefront in the last week. It was in the news the other day that one in six adults and one in four children will experience hunger in the days and weeks that are coming up upon us. So that's a tough one for the United States of America. But here locally, I think there are a lot of agencies who have risen to the challenge and filled the void of need, uh, including but not limited to uh, Park and Rex. Thank you for that. Salvation Army, Soup Kitchen, and of course, the agency that I'm affiliated with, Cornell Cooperative Extension, our gleaning program has been pretty active this year. As far as my council members, I want to thank you for the privilege and pleasure of serving with you, in particular the president and his leadership. And as always, I really enjoy working with my fellow alderman, older women, Ram Kassoon. Good holidays, and let's hope for a better 2021. Thank you. Alderman Rex Soon. Alderman Johnson, the feeling is more than mutual. It's been a pleasure for the last eight years. I don't even remember how long now, but it's been wonderful. And uh, I think we've always made a very good team. Um, I just wanted to say it was really nice to attend the lighting of the menorah last week. It's not easy for me to get to certain things these days with remote school and all those responsibilities, but it was really nice to be able to be a part of something like that, uh, small as it was. Um, it was still very nice. Um, my thanks in advance to the DPW department. Um, we know what's coming. Uh, tomorrow and they always do such an outstanding job so my thanks to them I know they go short on sleep and rest but they take care of uh, making the city safe so my thanks there um, to Chief Lewis you've done a great job by the city all these years and it's it's not just uh, it's not the work it's it's the time away from your family and everything else that you've given up and so we thank you for those sacrifices you've made um, I just want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas Happy New Year. I think we're all ready to put 2020 to bed. I know I am. Uh, hopefully we wake up to a, a brighter 2021. I think it's already looking up, that's for sure. So um, a safe and happy holiday to everyone. Alma Kleiner. Thank you, um, Don Lewis, Chief Lewis. Thank you very much and congratulations. Um, you've always answered all our questions. You've always been there and uh, not an easy job, and we really appreciate your service, so thank you. Um, happy Bill of Rights Day to everyone. That's what today is. Um, Marvin Cohen, more than Mr. Monhagen, Marvin Cohen was an unbelievable uh, Middletown historian, uh, source of so when, whenever at the Historical Society, we'd get stuck, even our city historian, um, Peter and I and everyone else. Whenever we couldn't come up with an answer, it's always ask Marv. Because um, Marv, uh, as he said in the obituary, uh, as Steve Cohen said in the obituary, he, he was the consummate volunteer. He was there for everything. He started more different publications and societies and uh, it's it just it, irreplaceable and uh, my condolences to his family and uh, they're going to plan a celebration of his life next summer so I'm be looking forward to that um, we passed 300,000 deaths from uh, <coughs> COVID every day We've had a Pearl Harbor every day. We've had a 9-11 every day. We've had a D-Day every single day. And there's been such depraved indifference to the loss of life by some people who said, well, just go ahead and let it go and we give up. So 
Um, we haven't given up. We're, we're doing the best we can, and we should all do everything we can to stay safe, to minimize those numbers, and to hope that the vaccine starts to work and is effective and does get distributed. Um, I remind people that sedition is a crime. If you want to stop the steal, it's easy. Put down your signs and go home because you're the ones trying to steal an election. And I thank all the election workers and all the people who, who work. It's not an easy job, the poll workers and all the people who did their best to make sure that this was a fair election. And uh, it's, it's, you know, we, we owe them so much and that's the essence of this democracy. And I always say I'm a Democrat, little d Democrat first because we are a democracy we're trying to stay that way and the essence of a democracy is to accept the transfer of power so um i also want to thank jen metzger uh she just was a wonderful state senator uh she's the probably the hardest working representative i've ever seen she was very helpful to us in middletown she was helpful to so many people and uh, those are some big shoes to fill. So I, I wish her well, and uh, I, I just thank her from the bottom of my heart. She went above and beyond, and her staff was terrific, too. Um, state and local aid from the federal government, which we desperately need. You know, it was passed in May by the Democrats, the HEROES Act. It was passed again in August by the Democrats, but suddenly, the money and, and even the Federal Reserve says you need to do this because as the mayor said, the federal government's the only, one who can, the only ones that can print money, but they don't seem to care. They're only gonna do it if you give liability to the other depraved indifference of the corporations that sent people to work and bet on how many would get COVID and bet on how many would die. Uh, it's, it's, but just absolve them of all responsibility. And if you don't do that and give them the liability from any legal responsibility, meanwhile, their side files, what, 50, 60 lawsuits trying to stop a legitimate election, but give them complete immunity or we're not going to give state and local governments any money. That's what's going on right now. That's what the Grim Reaper is insisting on, and that's his description of himself, not mine, Mr. McConnell. So that's where we are. Um, we hope, as the mayor said, with the, with the change of administrations, that we do get state and local aid. It's not blue states. It's not red states. It's people. It's the United States. I don't see how they say, we said a pledge today to the flag, the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag and to the Republic for which it stands, United States of America, indivisible. And we hear talks of secession again. So uh, I, I don't understand, I don't even understand how some of those people have the nerve to touch the flag, much less carry it. Okay, <laughs> Merry Christmas, <laughs> Happy New Year, <laughs> Happy Hanukkah. Thank you to all the volunteers and as Chris said, all the people making this uh, a, a good season for the, the, the best we can for the kids and for the people who really count and for all the need and all the hunger and all the want that's out there. Uh, well, Mr. Scrooge has another month in the White House. Um, we thank you. To all of you, and um, you know, we'll. I'm going to talk about the city in January, at the beginning of January, and my ideas for Middletown for going into the new year and things I think we need to pay attention to and think we should do. But for now, I just wish everyone the happiest holidays. Thank you. Alderman Cl uh, John Francois. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I tell you, uh, I think uh, without COVID this year, and I think the city never missed a beat. Uh, without COVID, I think everything is spot on, like we have done in the past. Uh, our, 
I'd like to thank uh, Chief Lewis. Thank you for your service to our great city. You'll surely be missed. Uh, DPW Commissioner, uh, as a chairman of DPW, I work real close with you, and you and your department never miss a beat. Whenever we receive a call, I also want to thank you for what you did for us power and I taking care of the issue at uh, uh, in our Beers Drive because uh, we received a lot of phone call. It was it was the smell was getting horrible, and and you know what when I when I get these calls and and I called you, I know you wasn't gonna be the beast. Everything is gonna be working fine. So. Thank you for all your help over the years. Uh, Chris, Fox and Rex, every meeting you come here, you update us on what's going on, which, what your department is doing with the kids. It's, it's, it's a wonderful things that you do with your department. And our kids, I think the school district and stuff that you do with the kids, our future is in good hand with all you do for us. Thank you. City clerk. John and your staff. I mean, we here come to the meeting. Everybody's suit up. We look good, but without you and your staff, I mean, I mean, you go above and beyond. I mean, we told staff at you. You got emails coming back and forth, but even re the resolution you put everything together. Uh -huh. We sit here. We'll go through it. It's a lot of work that you do. We appreciate all you do. And last but not least, the mayor. Uh, without your leadership, none of this stuff could have happened. Thank you for all you do. And Common Council President, thank you for running our tax chief. Uh, with all my colleagues, Sparrow, you've been a great partner. You know, we always go back and forth. Whenever I receive a phone call, you know, I'll let you know what's going on. Vice versa, you do the same thing. Thank you for working with all, all of you, the council. I appreciate it. I'm looking for another year. Everyone, have a happy holiday. Thank you. Alderman Burr. First, I'd like to thank the chief for many years of services. Uh, you keep a volunteer paid uh, department very well together, and we appreciate everything you do for us. Uh, all the department heads was nice working for you in 2020. And all my, my alderman, Alderman Massey, we've been working together for how many years now, Joe? 12? 12 years, I think. I'd like to thank all my aldermen and mayor, council president, and all the department heads for a fine job in 2020 and wish everybody happy holidays. Thank you. New business. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey to authorize the mayor to sign an agreement with the County of Orange to extend the current sales tax agreement for two more years with no changes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey, seconded by Alderman Tobin. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Tobin to authorize the treasurer to transfer $152,000 from the Community Development Fund balance to correct the un an underfunded line. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Tobin, second by Alderman Massey. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Jean Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsor Waldman Johnson to approve DPW to purchase three new vehicles at state bid price. Resolution sponsor Waldman Johnson, second by Waldman Jean Francois. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Jean Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Graham Kassoon to approve the proposal by Mill Restoration Company, Inc. for 9 Houston Avenue and restoring the Grand, Grand Wall at the community campus. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Graham Kassoon, second by Alderman Kleiner. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsor Alderman Kleiner to transfer a total of $17,000 within the 2020 DPW budget to cover an emergency boiler insulation services. Resolution sponsor Alderman Kleiner, seconded by Alderman Burr. Any discussion? Roll. 
Ram Kazoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman John Francois to authorize the treasurer to transfer $12,000 from the sewer fund for payment to CDM for the wastewater treatment plant digesters. Resolution by John Francois, seconded by Alderman Tobin. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passed. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr to approve the assessment collector's warrant for 2021. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr, second by Alderman John Francois. Discussion. Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodgers? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey to approve a lease between the City of Middletown and the Greater Middletown Interfaith Council regarding the use of 8 to 10 Mulberry Street for the warming station. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey, second by Alderman Kleiner. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Tobin to authorize the treasurer to transfer $300.93 within the Civil Service 2020 budget to cover a payment to Toshiba. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Tobin, seconded by Alderman Burr. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson to authorize the treasurer to transfer $125.97 within the Corporation Council 2020 budget to replenish a line that is overdrawn. <clears throat> Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, seconded by Alderman Tobin. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by all the women in Ram Kassoon to authorize the treasurer to transfer within certain accounts in the 2020 budget to cover existing overdrafts. Resolution sponsored by all the Kassoon, seconded by Alderman John Francois. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Ram Kassoon to authorize the treasurer to transfer $20,000 within the DPW 2020 budget to cover overdraft of the overtime account for the sanitation department. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Ram Kassoon, second by Alderman Kleiner. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Kleiner to approve a vacation buyback programs for non union employees. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Kleiner, seconded by Alderman Johnson. Any discussion? Yeah. Alderman Massey? Yeah, I'll be abstaining on this because it directly affects me. Okay. Anyone else? Roll. Ram Kazoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Abstain. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. That is all for new business. Audit. Mr. President, I move the accounts be audited, the claims be adjusted, and the city treasurer be authorized to issue warrants for their payment. Resolution responsible by Massey, second by Alderman Tobin. Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Move for adjournment. So moved.